Moses Kuria has dropped a bombshell. Moses Kuria alleges coup plot against President Ruto by top government officials. Some people who are in this government were attempting a coup. We know some people like Ahaina who saw the hand swinging they thought it was gone and they took advantage of the Gen Z there. This was a clear failed coup, Kuria told TV in an exclusive interview on Sunday. I've been calling them the generation of Uber and Fish Fingers. They have proven me wrong. Now the Uber and the Fish Fingers, people have shown me they can take this country forward. If I had a wish, I would want to be a Gen Z, Kuria said. He reflected on those trolling him online after the job loss saying, some people are enjoying me we will foot one, na hata wao hawana job. Hata hao wanani ridicule na hatuna job. Ati mimi unipate kwa kona na lia o, not me. I'm a global person. I support the government of national unity. If I get a chance to serve in the cabinet, I won't mind coming back, but if I don't, so be it, he said. Kure is raising two pertinent issues. The first one, he's dropping a bombshell that some people who were in this government were attempting a coup. Some people who were. That's an indication that they are no longer part of the government. But this is not the first time Korea is referring to some people attempting a coup. In his past posts, he has been pointing accusing fingers at the deputy president. He has been having some shadow boxing with the deputy president. So in essence, Kure is just trying to say that some people were sacked were maybe working with the Rigadi. That's what Kure is trying to say. And if you look at somebody attempting a coup, it's very easy for somebody in the security sector to attempt a coup. Upon Jafet Komi being sacked, it emerged that they were not in good terms with the root home. For about one year, I don't know whether Korea is trying to think along that line. NTV did a story where they exposed the frosty relationship between Ruto and Jafet Komi. And the reason they gave was that Kome was not happy on some of the directives that he was being given. So Kome and Ruto were not in very good terms. I don't know whether Kore is just trying to insinuate that. I don't know. And I'm not saying Kome attempted a coup. That's just a story that was captured by NTV. And now if you look at Moses Kuriam, I'm seeing a Moses Kuria who is just extending his war with Rigadi Gashagwa. The war is not stopping. It's still going on. I want us to put all this into perspective for Kenyans to understand what's happening here and what Kuria is trying to achieve. If you look at Moses Kuria from those remarks, it's very clear Moses Kure is trying to be relevant. He knows that Gen Z's are the new sheriffs in town and they are dictating terms. Kure wants to be in their good books. He wants to identify himself with them with the hope that Gen Z's can recommend his reappointment into the government. Because Gen Z's are dictating terms. If they can recommend that Moses could have been the government, he'll easily be reappointed. Kure is just disparate 
he wants to identify with Gen Z's hoping that they can recommend his reappointment. That's how disparate Korea has become. And then secondly, Korea is just trying to catch the attention of Ruto. It was a wholesale sucking. If you don't speak out, you can easily be forgotten. So you must make noise to be seen. As ye kuapo machoni, nalake halipo. If you just keep quiet, maybe you can easily be forgotten. Kure is making noise in order to catch the attention of Ruto, hoping that William Ruto can reappoint him back in the government. And also, if you listen to Kuria, he's talking of some people who are planning a coup. So Kuria is coming out as the gatekeeper, a person who was protecting Ruto. He cannot allow somebody attempting a coup in Ruto's government. I believe Kuria is just trying to remind William Ruto that the job he was doing in Kenya Kwanza He's not yet done with that job. And he's not yet done with that job because some people who are attempting a coup are still in government. So he's just trying to bring to the attention of Ruto that my job is not yet done. I'm saying that because if you look at individuals such as Moses Kuria, I believe they were given jobs in Ruto's government to contain Rigadi Gashagwa. They were to be used to contain Rigadi Gashagwa. The likes of Moses Kuria, Kimani Chumwa, Didi Nyoro. That was their main job. And I honestly believe that if William Ruto had that chance, he could just appoint Moses Kuria again in his government. But the problem, William Ruto is not even sure whether he will continue holding that office of the president, going on what happened when parliament was stormed and occupied. So Ruto is a disturbed man. But if everything was good, I'm seeing a president who could just reappoint Moses Kuria very easily in his government. In fact, Moses Kuri and Kithure Kiliki, if William Ruto had that luxury, those two individuals, he would easily reappoint them in his government. They, are, they were being used to contain regard the Gashagwa. And I strongly believe William Ruto's intention is still to contain regard the Gashagwa. Above all, the remarks by Moses Kuria confirms that power is temporary. If you are holding a public office, know that one day you will not be holding that office. It's not a private office or your personal office. That's a public office. Power is temporary. I really sympathize with Moses Kuria when he says he's a global person. How global is Moses Kuria? Who can even give him a job? Hmm? Assuming today he was to seek for a job somewhere, who can employ Moses Kuria? As a cabinet secretary, Moses Kuria was a loose talker. We still remember him abusing NTV. And it's very interesting that today he's now asking or requesting for interviews. We still remember him attacking NTV. He was attacking people left, right, center. It's clear he was being used by some forces in the government. And that spoiled his reputation. Korea dented his image. I don't think he can easily be employed by anybody. Going on how he behaved as a cabinet secretary. So that should be a lesson to Kenyans or to anybody. 
that when you are in a position of authority, be mindful of what you are saying and of what you are doing. That power is temporary. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Those watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. If possible, subscribe, give the video a like. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.